And this is the clip show that I had alluded to in uh, episode 300. So if you are offended by cursing, as always, the clip shows contain a fair amount of cursing. So just prepare yourself for that. This is 50 minutes or so of what I feel is some of our best work. If you have things that you enjoy, please send them out or please uh, please retweet them and just let us know what, uh, what you loved about the last 300 episodes of Norse Code. But uh, let's start off with Dusty's explanation of how the show came to be in episode 100. But you know what we haven't done in a really long time? We haven't done a number of the week. Can we start off episode 100 with a number of the week, Dusty? Uh, we can give it a shot. I mean, honestly, like, since you know, you're know you driving the show, there's literally no other reason for me to be here. So I'm going to uh, execute <laughs> it on the number of the week and then uh, probably take off until the mailbag. I'm going to try to kill the fly that's flying around my studio. I'll let you know if I succeed. Uh, but number of the week. So I have several. You well, mentioned in the... For, for episode 100, what possibly could the number of the week be? Well, so this is episode number 100, but this is not the 100th episode, per se. Long what? Time, uh, I know. Shocking, right? Uh, long-time listeners will know that many of our episodes from the first season ran uh, a little long. That's putting and, it mildly. And uh, consequently, a lot of them were split up into two-parters, but they were not you know, numbered separately. So if we're being truly shallow and pedantic about it, uh, episode number 100 is technically the 124th episode of Norse Code. So this is a, uh, an entirely made-up, meaningless milestone that we are celebrating right now. With this, Blaspheme! Uh, Blaspheme! I will not celebrate meaningless milestones. Wait, but also all all of these milestones are meaningless. I mean, it's based on the base ten system, which we have because of the number of fingers that we have. I mean, it's, it's 100 is arbitrary as one twenty four. It's a that's, milestone. That's fair. Uh, so, episode number one hundred, we'll uh, we'll do a little little number of the week for you. Uh, James first guest hosted an episode of Norse Code, uh, episode four. I made it a, a whole three episodes before uh, your lap- to tag out. Before your laptop went rogue and uh, and we had to step in. Uh, it's true. It was one of the uh, the CIA like uh, destabilizers in Syria, I guess, is what I've is I, what I've heard. I've, left- I've only gotten postcards from around the world addressed <laughs> to me. From my laptop, so I, I just have to guess. I like how when I was originally brought on for uh, to to assist with the show, because you and I had had uh, had an idea for doing another show, and then you would talk to Arif, and uh, it seemed like this was going to happen, and you really sold me on the idea of the show by stating, "It's okay, James. You don't have to be back on the air. You don't have to talk to people." <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I totally pitched it to James. I was like, "This this will be great." I know you've got a newborn. the The reason we couldn't do uh, States Rights Minute anymore was because you know you just didn't have time to be on the air. And I was like, "Don't worry, James. We just need you to do a little bit of back end editing stuff." Four episodes later, he's hosting like eight episodes in a row. And now, in our third season, we finally gotten to the point where even though I'm on the show, James is still hosting. Yeah. So I was I was brought in. <laughs> Under the guise of not being able to do a thing other than uh, other than editing, which was totally fine with me, and uh, and now I'm stuck on here. I, I, I'm glad that the facade crumbled early for you, though. Well, Episode four—that's incredible. It <laughs> reveals how transparent my scheme to be able to take credit for something where I did none of the work truly was. Who's hosted more episodes? I think this is a legitimate question. Do we know? I I started to do a breakdown of it and it just it was getting ugly. Like the the number is just it's getting ugly. Yeah. Well, no, it depends on how you count the two part episodes. Because if you if you count the two part episodes, then I'm pretty sure it's me and it's not close. But if each of those episodes that where we broke it into two parts counts as one, I think we're getting pretty close to fifty fifty. Yeah, it, it gets it's it's about fifty fifty thanks to the uh, thanks to the, the two parting. Like if you just count times recorded, then uh, then it's 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 split pretty evenly fifty fifty. Which again, uh, I was brought on for editing purposes only. So what the hell am I doing here? I was actually You're so good at it. The I fans was, love you. I was listening to the uh, I was actually listening to episode four uh, the other day just because I was curious what it what it still sounded like and. Uh, Arif and I had the uh, had the 
uh, relationship or the had the rapport of people who hadn't talked in over 20 years. Like that was <laughs> shocking. I know, right? Because that's exactly what it had been. Like you were a neighbor of mine way back when, <laughs> and we're really good friends with my uh, really good friends with my brother. And yeah, we we just we just got up and uh, got up and started running about the Vikings. So several episodes later, here we are, and we're uh, we have inside jokes, and uh, I still kind of hate Dusty for the fact I'm not just editing. You do not. Yeah, you do not, not hate it. To me. <laughs> Not hate it. That is a lie. I do have one question for you before we let you go. Okay. How old is Blake Bortles really? Ah, <laughs> uh, I think that he's younger than forty. I'm not sure, like how <laughs> exactly old he is, but I would say younger than forty. But, but, I would put money on on that. But we can all agree that he's not actually twenty four, right? If he is, he's the oldest 24. Like he's like, he might be like Tom Coughlin's grandson. Like that might be. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Like he went out to eat with Tom Coughlin when he was young and Tom Coughlin told him all his war stories and Blake's hair just started to go when he was like 11. <laughs> the beard started coming in at like 12. Yeah. Oh, man. Poor Blake, dude. Because I like it. He's a good guy and he's a nice. Yeah, he's right. nice to the fans. Like he's real chill with everybody in Jacksonville. But dude, yeah, come he on, seems, man. He seems so cool, but yeah, he's it was bad. much. E- Blaine Gabbert was much easier to hate. Much. Right, well, he just like blocked everyone on Twitter, and then he didn't. Uh, he just kind of yeah, sneaky, which was fantastic because right? then you know you can tweet them whenever you want. Like I avoid adding players because I think that's rude. Like they're people too, you know. Like and they already right. had a bad game, so I avoid like adding the players that they're performing badly. But Blaine, it didn't matter because. You'd be like, hey, dude, saw you fishing. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, blocked. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, sorry, man. <laughs> Don't look at Blaine me. Blaine would be like, happy birthday. Thanks for your service, veterans. Like, thanks for reaching out, Blaine. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, really? You thank me? Blocked. Block. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this is 100% true. Like, this is not even an exaggeration. You could tweet compliments to him. You could tweet nothings to him. You could be a PR person reaching out. To like set up an advertisement or whatever, he would just block you. Isn't yeah, you, incredible. You could really tell him like, "Hey, you played great. Don't let everybody else get you down." Blocked. Like that. It did not matter what you said to him. <laughs> if you added him, you were getting blocked. Which is a power move. I mean, that's an absolute power move. If you at me on Twitter, I will block you no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the antithesis of what the <laughs> platform is for, but I, I, mean, I respect it. <laughs> I'm using this medium in its intended way. Block. <laughs> Block. <laughs> How dare you at me on this website? Maybe he's just nude all the time. Because I have that standing rule. Don't at me while I'm nude. Don't at me when you're nude, yeah. Yeah. So maybe he just <laughs> goes around nude. <laughs> That's probably it. I think I've added enough references to the movie The Rock. I feel like I, I hit the number that I w- told you I was trying to hit. Uh, so I think we're good. You hit your own over under, so we're good. Yeah, I, I, I think I did. Well, all right. Enjoy the big game, everyone. We will join you again this postseason with the beginning of the draft of Palooza. Uh, perhaps with a guest, perhaps not. But one way or another, we can promise you optimal digital multimedia content from the number one podcast for your Minnesota Vikings, Norse Code. So until then, our formula is this. Losers whine about their best. Winners go home and bone the prom queen. We'll see you next week. Wow. What a finish. That was the strongest part of the show. I'm so glad I muted myself there. <laughs> did I did I get you? Yeah, you, you got me. I, I'm I have had such a such a shitty last like few nights of sleep where I'm like just about to crack and that that cracked me that was <laughs> oh my god the tears okay well thank you for going over on the references to, 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 to the rock <laughs> but you missed like the the ultimate like that is the money quote from the rock yes I, I, if, I... And if not that it's Nick Cage <laughs> looking meaningfully into the camera and going Era was, was the, the prom was queen. the prom queen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that moment has stuck with me ever since 1996. I've been quoting that movie ever since eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we used to say it on the bus for debate. <laughs> I remember Peter Metzger trying terribly to do a to do a Sean Connery impression, and it was always whine about that bashed. Which now just which just sounds like Bane now. <laughs> oh my God, you're right. It does. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> it's too bad that that the Sean Connery. Uh, impressions have like merged into Bane impressions. Yeah, that's that's just me. I, I would have to practice get some some good differentiation because it do, it does like I think about it and I'm like, <laughs> you merely adopted the darkness. I was born. <laughs> it. It's no, pretty the, much the same. It, it's it's the it's the Kevin thing from earlier. Vic, victory has <laughs> defeated you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the best part is is I know we're all imagining Bane cat. <laughs> I was wondering, Greg, first. <laughs> well, okay, so the, <laughs> my favorite is that I'm imagining Bane saying all of these to Alex Trebek. But I was wondering who would break first. <laughs> your mind or your body? Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> For you. <laughs> For you. <laughs> it's Celebrity Jeopardy. <laughs> with, with Bane and Sean Connery. <laughs> if they could get into a shouting match, if Daryl Hammond and maybe Tom Hardy could get into a shouting match, that would be... That would be amazing. I'd lose it. I'm like, apparently I'm not good at using Skype because I know I saw you send it to me, but now I don't actually know where the chat is on here. Oh, uh, um, like, I, got, I got it. Yeah, I got there it. There you go. Yeah, it's in a little word bubble. Public assistance board game. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have just told me the subtitle. That, that, why bother working for a living? <laughs> Look at the pictures of, of like some of the spaces on the board. Oh Dude, God! The cards, like the like. Also, okay, can we also talk about how shittily it's wrapped in plastic? Like, <laughs> what is this plastic wrap they put on it? Well, no, well so I mean, they... like, if we can surprise focus on the family doesn't like. I I don't know who it is, but essentially, <laughs> yeah, it looks like they took like previously pl plastic wrap from something else and like just sort of barely wrapped it around. <laughs> yeah, or like they just like wrapped it in a clear plastic bag, like it's tied on the back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what is your issue with this potato salad guy? It represents the wor it, I, It's like all the worst things about the internet all rolled into one. What? It's not the worst thing. The worst thing about the internet is all the fucking harassment. Well, okay, that's, that's, that's fair. But <laughs> the second worst thing, well, it exposes the... <laughs> this okay. is not second. It's a cyberbullying. It's... All right. Look, if you're going to talk about actual tragedies, it's not as bad as abortion either, but I was going to say it was. <laughs> but seriously, this this whole thing, first of all, some, some Yahoo is like, oh, you know, it would be really funny if I made a Kickstarter where I wanted to make potato salad. I'll just ask for like 10 bucks. And, you know, that's that's fine. It's dumb, but it's fine. It's not what Kickstarter is for. Uh, I'm a little butthurt because we tried to get Dovetail founded with a Kickstarter project, and that's actually a really good idea, and we didn't even come close. I guess we should have offered to make potato salad. We would have fucking hit our target four times over. Oh, my God. Uh, the money that went to this dude for potato salad would not have gone to literally any other Kickstarter. Well, yeah, exactly. And that, is, and that is what sucks about the Internet, is that there are all kinds of people who have too much disposable income who are, you know, probably a lot like us, you know, men of, you know, education and greater means than us, obviously, in their, in their 20s and 30s, who, you know, have more money than they need. And they're just like, oh, you know, I, I use all this, you know, I download all my music because I'm too cheap to pay for it. And, you know, I listen to all this stuff and I, cr and I critique it because I'm too cheap to pay for it. And I bitch about how Facebook puts ads in my face all the time because I'm too cheap to pay for it. But I'll piss away a bunch of money on some idiot's potato salad that he's probably not even going to make. It doesn't even look that good. And I'm never going to eat it. But, ah, oh, potato salad, here's 20 bucks. Like, okay so, okay, so to be clear, your issue is not with this kid who magically made $70,000, right? Because I'm totally all about this kid. 
No, I mean, he, the, look, anyone can win the lottery. I am not. And I honestly don't believe that he set out like, oh, I'm going to scam the Internet and give me $70,000. And all I have to do is pretend to make potato salad. I don't think it's going to make the potato salad. Is there any question he's not going to make the potato salad? He fucking better. Like, like, right? Like, he's, I mean, I'm, like, I'm, I'm sure he's – If I $70,000 to make a $10 potato salad, I would make a ton of potato salad. Well, if I was him, I would make a $70,000 potato salad. I would be on the internet buying black truffles. No, you fucking wouldn't. Yeah, I would. You would, you would want seventy. You would want to keep maybe 65000 of those dollars. Well, I would never do this like in the first place. I could still make well, truffle I mean, potato salad with $5,000. I would never do this in the first place because I'm not an idiot. But... <laughs> So, I mean, Arif, this Arif idiot do, you, do you see? Do you see why? Did, why? Why we wanted to <laughs> wait till after the show for this? This is this is phenomenal. No, I, I understand. But, so, okay, no, it, it, so it, if, if the issue is generalized class hatred, I can get behind you. Yeah, it's, okay. it's not generalized class hatred. It, it is specific to the internet and maybe the subset of people who use things like Kickstarter. It is this belief I mean, okay, that every useful product on the internet, everything we like about the internet should be free so that we have enough money to just throw at whims that make us laugh and clap our hands for five minutes. The kind of people who gave this dude like $200 to have a potato salad or whatever. Actually, you know what? I hope he fucking just trolls people and buys a potato salad. I hope he doesn't make it at all. <laughs> I would like half a pint of mustard potato salad, please. And then take a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> with, with the price tag of 10. <laughs> and, then, and then a picture of him just like throwing cash around and just like, yay! He's like, he's rolling around in cash like he <laughs> will in Breaking keep, Bad. A kiddie pool of coins. <laughs> he's got Did, that next to told him he needs to keep some of this around for taxes? I hope not. <laughs> I hope, yeah, gonna, he, I hope he ends be, up in debtor's prison because he didn't actually make potato salad. <laughs> uh, he's going to be rolling no around. That you have to do the thing that people agree to. Exactly. People rolling around in cash like Huel from Breaking Bad right next to his container of Hugo's potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or if he could take a picture of the potato salad on top of, like, stacks of money. <laughs> that, that would be fine. It's. I mean, it's all, it's all very so, silly. It's fine. I... Well, okay, so, but, like, I don't think well, Kickstarter should change its terms of service or anything. I don't think it should be made. illegal to do what this guy did. I, I just think it's stupid, and this kind of behavior should not be encouraged. There are enough real fucking problems in the world and enough people trying to make useful things that maybe we can spend some of our hard-earned fucking software development dollars or whatever idiot thing we do to become wealthy in our early 20s and frivolously fucking make other people... So it's not, it's not even the action of people wasting $200 on this. It's the symbolism of the action because like, people were not going to spend that money anyway, right? So it's like the, it's what that action represents that you hate so much, right? So, but these are the same people that go to like novelty stores and buy like Shakespeare insult gum, right? Like it's, it's like the same thing. I guess they get something, but they don't really get anything. It's Shakespeare. It's, it's shitty tasting gum, and they're shitty insults, and they're Shakespeare insults on a piece of gum. Okay, but look at the look at the Kickstarter website just itself. And I, I know there are people that hang out on Kickstarter with you know lots of money, looking for projects to support. You know, they just that's just what they do. They throw money at Kickstarter projects. They have you know whatever budget, and that's fine. Your example, like there are so many worthwhile projects on Kickstarter, and. Yeah, I'm sure they didn't, they didn't like go. They're like, oh, I wonder what's on Kickstarter.com. They, they got shared the thing. They yeah. go to the thing. Yeah, and so what we what we ended up with was a situation where the the novelty store was full of you know opportunities to you know donate to Planned Parenthood or you know your local homeless shelter or a political candidate or a food bank or something, and instead you got the gum that turns your mouth blue. The- but that assumes that they walked into the novelty store. Someone walked out of the novelty store with this gum and was like, hey, you know what would be funny? Have some gum. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, okay, without thinking, hey, that novelty store <laughs> like down the block has a way for me to support Planned Parenthood, which would be really great. No, they're just like, yeah, gum is pretty cool, I guess. I, I mean, yeah, I guess. But, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm too old to appreciate nonsense, you know, novelty like that. But, like... I'll be sure not to wear my Spokane Stan shirt anywhere near you then. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> or my Lynn Sanity shirt. Yeah, please don't. That's that's a bit much. It's a great shirt. Is it really? It says Lynn Sanity on it, so that's that's a lot of points for it. Are you 
<laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> and I got, I specifically made sure it had no Knicks paraphernalia on it because I knew he wasn't going to stay with the Knicks for long because he's like an average player, right? And so it has like sort of Knicks ish colors, but not really. It just looks like a basketball color. So it's great. Uh, if it had Knicks gear on it, that would be, that would be pretty bad. But it doesn't. It's just about Jeremy Lin. Fantastic shirt. That's, uh, that, that's, impressive. that's money that would have gone to potato salad Kickstarter. Is it, is, you. is it really? Well, I mean, you would, I guess that's not the direct opportunity guys, but it's not like, that's not money that would have gone to feed the homeless is my point. Yeah. And I, and I know I'm making kind of a, kind of a stretchy argument. I guess the, the thing that I take issue with the most is just the, uh, the sense of sheer frivolity that the internet kind of creates. In yeah. Okay. And right. it's, it's it's the fact that the symbol of what this action represents got promoted, right? right? That it that it's in your face. Yeah, uh, well, and and it, it and it does particularly grind my gears as somebody who has made things for people that they enjoy, or you know done things for people that they enjoy, and getting them to give me any fucking money at all is like pulling teeth. And. But it, it, it makes me feel like the, the, the good things that I have done, you know, the, the, the art that I've created, the websites I've done, the podcasts, all that stuff, that it is somehow worse than frivolous. It is not even worth fucking potato salad money. <laughs> and I don't like that feeling. And I know it's, I know it's not a, a fair way to feel about it because they're not even close to the same thing. I mean, Norse code is very unlikely to go viral just for the, the subject content. But I used to believe that about potato salad, too. And look how wrong I was. But if you had been like, if you had asked Arif, let's say someone puts up a Kickstarter for a potato salad or produces a really engaging podcast about a very specific subject, which do you think would receive more donations? And I would say the podcast. But if you had asked which one is most likely to go viral and receive an insane amount of support, definitely the potato salad. Oh, the, the salad. potato salad, and it's not even close. Uh, potato salad thing is an example of the fucking cat and Star Wars obsessed idiocy part of the internet. Yeah, what the fuck is wrong with Star Wars? Lots. D no, no, you do not. <laughs> Arif, trust me on this. You've gone Wait, down one rabbit hole. You don't want to go down another. You don't, hold on, hold on. You don't hold have on. to we stay don't have to, we, don't have, we don't have to go down this rabbit hole. We can if you want. I just want to know if these problems, if your issues with Star Wars go away, if I call it a space fantasy instead of science fiction. Uh, no, it's still, the plot still doesn't make any sense. It's still. Does it have? No, 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 You're right, I'm done, I'm done. Okay, <laughs> I've known Dusty a lot of years, and this is not something that is going to go well for you. James, I'm going to bring this up James later. James can tell like, you, I fucking hate stuff. Star Wars. Jeez. Uh, uh, I guess I'm not going to touch that for now. Okay, I, I, I will say <laughs> that I will definitely see the new movie or movies, probably like right when they come out, so I can That's yell. That's like the worst thing you could do if you hate Star Wars. But how what? else will I be able to yell intelligently about how much they suck? Uh, I guess that's a good point. Um, that's why I initially got into Harry Potter, and then I realized I liked it. <laughs> well, but, yeah. Luckily, that hasn't happened with Star Wars because with every single movie except for the second one, they've gotten progressively worse, and they were like, never that good in, to begin with. As in Episode Five. Yeah, right? that's what he's talking yeah. about. Uh, okay, no, that's fair. I don't consider like the episodes one through three part of See, that's, Star Wars. That's cheating. Like, anyway. like the Mission Impossible no, no, series no, is amazing no. we, if you we've only gone take down this one. <laughs> <laughs> like the Transformers series is amazing. Your, if you only your take the first one, your example is your example is also one I'm totally fine with. That's like not, you didn't like like you know what the logical conclusion of this is, Reef. People will like specific things. Oh no! How oh, I would like to paint you with the broadest pros possible Star Wars brush. So those are Fantastic. some of the. Your better argument is that I have read the expanded universe novels, and that I should be shamed for. You should. You are um, correct. Um. But okay, anyway, so regardless of, I guess, cats and Star Wars, hey, I, I will say this. The dude handled that so well. He was like, I guess uh, my next goal is $300. I'll make it really fancy. And then after he got $300, he was like, okay, should we just make hats? I think I want to make hats. Like that was like totally, and he was like, let's make hats for everybody. And then he was like, okay, so this is a lot of money, and I totally didn't expect this. 
uh, I, no so longer rent... I, no long, I no longer know what's reasonable here, I think is what he yeah. said. Yeah, right. He's like, uh, so I'm going to rent a tent and make potato salad for anybody who can come? <laughs> I think he handled this totally really well. Uh, so I'm just going to give him credit for that. No, he's. I, I support the person that you know made the Kickstarter. He seems like a like a pretty cool dude. He's got his head on straight, and yeah, I know his his responses to this whole nonsense have been. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop just short of saying admirable, because <laughs> I don't, well, yeah, I don't, yeah, don't want to admire anyone right. involved in this fiasco. It is the uh, it is the donors with whom I have a bone to pick. Okay, so, well, but like the first donors, you don't have a problem with. Like somebody who's like, yeah, I'll throw you like two fifty or whatever, right? You know, are you, you going to make me pick a dollar amount? Are you going to make me tell you this, how many people are well, allowed I'm to die? Not, in the war? I'm not going to make. I'm just saying, <laughs> the person who was like, there's zero dollars donated to this this poor man's potato salad mission. I'm going to give him two fifty, right? But like, but you, but but reasonably, you have an issue with somebody who was like, this dude has raised thirty five thousand dollars. That's hilarious. Here's another 200, right? Like that's, that's, that's more of a problem, right? That's idiocy. That is so stupid. Yeah. Okay. No, I get, okay. I'm cool. <laughs> I think actually, I, I feel like John Kerry said so. it best uh, when he was testifying before Congress, when he said, how do you ask a man to be the last man to stupidly give money to somebody making potato salad? <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, I got to go. You guys have fun. All right, see you, James. Thanks for being on the show. See you, James. <laughs> 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 yeah, things went, uh, things went horribly wrong. So, um, again, you, you need to take a, pic- take a look at these. We'll be tweeting this out on the, uh, uh, on the Norse Code uh on the North Coast Twitter account. Uh, it'll also be in the show notes. You need to take a look at this picture, but uh, I think what we're going to do is uh, is read our uh, responses to what Jay Cutler looks like. Dusty, start us off. Or didn't... No, I wrote the, I wrote the first one. Sorry, it says Dusty above that, so... Great job. Yeah, I... <laughs> not like I wanted to sleep or anything tonight. <laughs> all right uh three two one so we're gonna read our individual uh, responses to this uh so my first one was that jay cutler looks like a guy at a methadone clinic to me he looks like a guy that was in a six hundred thousand dollar car theft ring that just got busted up in denver uh the mug shots of the six ringleaders were mug shots of homeless crack addicts <laughs> homeless Homeless crack addicts. Uh, he looks like uh, one of those cops that has one day left till retirement. Uh, Jay Cutler is the face of the opiate crisis. <laughs> it could be your family. It could be a friend. It could be a quarterback for the Dolphins. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, Jay Cutler looks like someone who was just told that he is the father on Maury. And uh, now he has to decide whether or not the kid will be vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of looks like somebody who's what borrowing that? money from an ever-expanding circle of people in order to pay off everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Cutler looks like his dad stayed up until one in the morning waiting for him to come home drunk from a popular kid's party in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Cutler looks like a Giants fan this year. Ooh. Mm. Jay Cutler looks like someone who thinks he's in the middle of successfully convincing someone that his 84 Camaro with a spare tire and a different colored hood is worth $4,500. <laughs> you know, when I, when I read that, I thought, well, that's oddly specific. <laughs> but it has a brand new differential. That took like two weeks to install. <laughs> Look, Jay you go to autoplaner.com, like just... these things are selling for $5,500. Really, this is a steal. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Cutler looks like he just got suspended for tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Cutler looks like uh, Bannon's illegitimate child. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Cutler looks like he got a caught escaping from a leper colony. Ugh. Jay Cutler looks like he mis- mixes flour with cocaine to extend the high. Ugh. Jay Cutler looks like he's standing in line for water in Puerto Rico. 
Oh, oh. Too that's sad. sad. That's sad. Jay Cutler looks that's like sad. he was deeply affected by the death of Tom Petty. <laughs> oh. Jay Cutler looks like he thinks Puerto Rico is the name of the hooker he hired three nights ago. <laughs> Does Puerto Rico? <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, Jay Cutler looks like he was getting charged up for a team meeting with his girlfriend in the office. Oh. <laughs> Jay Cutler oddly topical. Jay Cutler looks like he just endured a Saturday afternoon at IKEA. No meatballs. <laughs> no meatballs. None. Uh, Jay Cutler looks like he's been babysitting the president. Ugh. <laughs> Jay Cutler looks that's, like he—that's a Bob Corker reference, by the way. That is, we are not an explicitly political podcast. <laughs> yes. If anything, <laughs> we sports. we stick to sports here. Stick to sports. <laughs> Jay Cutler looks like he just discovered the hooker's penis. Ooh. <laughs> we gotta we gotta cut that out, man. <sighs> Fine. I'm sorry. We gotta cut that out. That's what he said about the hooker's penis. Oh, Jesus. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Cutler looks like he just lost a fight with a surly drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Jay Cutler's fiance isn't okay with the seating arrangement three days before the wedding reception. He looks uh, beat up. That's what we're trying to say. He looks like he's had a rough night. He looks like Al. He 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 looks like he's had like a rough like three weeks. He looks like he looks like he was just hanging out with Blake Bortles for the last couple days. He looks like someone who was retired and then forcibly not retired. Oh, wait. (laughs) Oh, he could have been (laughs) naked on that beach. He could have he could still be naked on that beach. No more. In some sense, he's always naked on that beach. (laughs) This question is from me. I did not. I did not tweet it, oh, okay. but uh, Arif, do you believe that Avril Lavigne is still alive? I don't know. <laughs> I'm genuinely concerned. I think there's enough questions here. Well, <laughs> so is it just because she's been like out of the spotlight for so long that uh, you're, you're, you're not certain that she is who she says she is? Or is it just that her makeup makes it easy to like... Like send a body double in her place, like because that's that's like one of the conspiracy theories floating around the internet is that uh, Avril Lavigne is dead and has been dead for what like two years now, and a body double has no been... much longer than two years. Oh really? Like fourteen years. So so Avril Lavigne was never like a real. Thing. Well, no, no, I guess that would be so. So she so she put out like one album, dated a guy from some forty one, and recorded, the, and recorded and the second, recorded the second, and then died, and and then fake... the second album comes out. It's her vote, but like it's the new performer. So there's a new performer like lip syncing every Avril Lavigne song, like from the second album, and all subsequent Avril Lavigne music is like fake. Yeah, well, the voice is different, and I know that that's actually not that compelling given how much production can affect the process. But the voice is different, the music's significantly different, her style suddenly changed, and yes, these are all things that pop stars, you know, go through. Uh, but it happened. Really quickly, significantly, all at once, all of the music on, on the 2007 album is really sad, potentially suicidal, and the jawline is different. The height, of, according to some random Brazilian website that I want to trust, the heights are different. Um, some people say, I, I think the lips look a lot different. That's like the most compelling thing to me because Avril Lavigne has very distinctive lips. It's got this curl. And I don't, the new one, evidently her name is Melissa. The new one, actually, this is my favorite thing about this conspiracy is that whenever the Avril Lavigne Twitter account tweets, people will just respond with "Nice try, Melissa." <laughs> I think that's great, <laughs> but <laughs> just amazing. That's exactly what an imposter would say, Melissa. <laughs> but uh, indeed, it is. But yeah, I mean the. There's not a chance that she grew smaller, right? She was already pretty small. Why would she get shorter, Dusty? I don't know what the answer is. Except <laughs> we have a pretty good hypothesis. Here's the thing. We already have interviews from when Avril Lavigne was alive of Melissa, the body double that she employed at the time. They were already teaching her to sound like Avril. Wait, she had a body double? Or is This is... Yeah, I mean, almost all celebrities have body doubles. Wow. This is, this is just like to protect her for like paparazzi and stuff. 
Wow. So she was she was like in training. So every celebrity has like their their body double in training, basically, in case they like die well, and want to keep it a secret. No, no, no. Not like I don't no, the the only, the only reason that she was learning to sound like Everlivin because they were best friends and uh, they thought it'd be fun if she sounded like it wasn't like I think it was a happenstance thing. I don't think it was like a premeditated in case she dies, Melissa, you will take over. <laughs> I think it was just, oh my God, she's dead. Nobody can know. Melissa, you have to bear this burden for the next 15 years until Twitter finds out. Well, why can't why can't Avril Lavigne just be dead? Well, because then you wouldn't be able to sell the, the music. Are you kidding me? Like, artists do no, so the, much in better. In the short term, that new album that she recorded right before she died, you're going to do monster numbers. Of course it is. But it's already going to do pretty good numbers. Not as good as if she you know, died right before its release. But you're not going to get the 2013, 2014 hits. You're not going to get a uh, Girlfriend, where she steals some dude's girlfriend. Or Kawaii, where she tries to be cute in a in Japan. Name one artist who is less successful posthumously. Uh, all of them, because they couldn't make more albums. Like, well, Amy Winehouse sold a lot of the one album. Great. <laughs> I think if she lived longer, the cumulative sales of four albums would be a lot more. She ends up selling more albums. All right. Name one artist postulum. It's like, wait, all of them, man. Well, no, all I'm, all I'm saying is that existing catalogs get a pretty significant sales bump when an artist dies. It happened in Nirvana. And it's a, it's a one-time it's a one time bump. And why wouldn't you wait uh-huh. until at least four albums are out before you're like, oh, she's dead, she killed herself. Now all four <laughs> albums are <laughs> so. I have it only makes sense, Dusty. I have listened to more Prince music since he died than before he, or then way before that that he was alive i've well that, that's just way. a personal feeling on your part no prince is you way more no, prince is way, prince way more famous more. now i prince know is definitely way more famous I, now that he's dead so what and, do you mean prince is more famous now if prince had died after his first album he wouldn't have made the whoever owns the rights to his album maybe michael jackson wouldn't have made nearly as much money as if prince continued producing hits decades into the future like he did uh michael jackson another example of an artist who is yes. more popular now that he's dead Thriller was the best-selling album of all time before he died. <laughs> well, yeah, and he, and he wouldn't have sold well, it, like, he, first of all, if he had completed his, like, crazy uh, O2 Arena, like, quote-unquote, tour thing, it would have been that, and then he would have gone back to selling, like, basically no records. But there's been, like, since his death, there's been a resurgence in, like, like mid-catalog Michael Jackson fandom. That's great. He needed to have developed that mid-catalog stuff first. If he had died after his first solo album, no one would have cared. They'd have been like, oh, child stars, this happens. He, he's no longer bankrupt just, because he died. Make, well, yeah, that's true. You're just making <laughs> my argument for me. You want your artist to die after they've got a good decade of music out there. Well, so maybe, maybe that argument applies to Avril Lavigne as well. Like, maybe if she does, like, kill herself after a second album, it's like, oh, she was, what, like, 19? <laughs> like, oh, that's sad. But... <laughs> right. Exactly. If she dies now, oh, there's so much money. Speaking of Prince, good though, job, Melissa. Good <laughs> so, job. So, so here's here's my question. Then my my last question. I, I feel like we've dug pretty deep on this one. Will Avril Lavigne ever die? Like, will we wait for Melissa to die of natural causes and then just have a great big funeral for Avril Lavigne? No, I think you, you can, I think Melissa's a unique case because. She, was, she already spent a lot of time with Avril. And hold on, also, here's something. Avril Lavigne, 2007 album, a lot like the 2002 or 2003 album, whatever it is, uh, hates like, it's like very like early 2000s. I hate preps, I'm in alt, punk, whatever. Um, but like hates the trappings uh, of, of, you know, whatever you want to call preppy, rich boy, whatever, high school. And then that's exactly who she becomes. After that album's released, that doesn't make any sense. That album already hates, you know, girls who wear pink. And then she wears pink all the time. Immediately. Styles change gradually, Dusty. So you think that is a result of Avril Lavigne literally becoming someone else and not just like uh, an, an image change? Yeah, it's not like, it's not like a Madonna-style transformation. Right. Do we have any more questions or are we just ending on the Avril Lavigne conspiracy? No, I think, I think we've hit uh, peak Norse code. There's uh, 
<laughs> There's no better place to end than with your vehement defense of uh, Melissa as Avril Levine. The jawlines are different, Dusty. It's all there. Well, uh, yeah. could you, do you have this, uh, this link to this Brazilian newspaper? You, will you put that in the show notes so that uh, listeners can weigh in for themselves? Yeah, well, I'll put the first link of the tweet thread, uh, the first tweet of the tweet thread I found it in, so you can go through the entire conspiracy. Because, I mean, that's how conspiracies can unravel these days, through tweet threads. <laughs> Thank you, Louise Mensch. That's, uh, <laughs> I, I, I might cut that sentence out. I don't think anyone should say that. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> 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 that, <laughs> no one should ever say that. That's fair. I think we have our episode title. No, no. No. <laughs> Fucking Christ. I I forgot what I had named the show. <laughs> also, uh if we're, if we're naming I mean this is much better, right? <laughs> It took every ounce of strength I had not to spit take that. <laughs> oh my god. The worst part is that this is terrible Christmas show material because we didn't actually say what you named the show. <laughs> this might be the most offensive thing that we've ever done that nobody knows about. You're right, but that doesn't involve a board game. Oh, well, I mean. <laughs> I'm bringing that, by the way, to uh, to Seattle, so we're going to... Oh, my God. We're going to have to figure out that. Um, wow, episode 293 may have the best title that has ever happened. <laughs> I'm... I'm so upset with myself. <laughs> <laughs> It's a fucking tragedy. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm gonna call your brother, and your brother's gonna tell you, <laughs> your brother's gonna tell you what a terrible person you are for for making I mean, how light. How phone call go? Hey, Shad, it's James. Long time no talk. Maybe since the wedding. Anyway, so there's this quarterback. His name is Kirk Cousins, right? So K I O K. That's important. <laughs> <sighs> Dusty is spinning in his grave right now. Wait. Um <laughs> Battery. Bad. I'm not changing it. Um and I'm not disappointed. I'm just going to move on and <laughs> scroll so that I can't see the title when we do the show. That that is what that is my solution to the problem. Nah, if you think that'll work, <laughs> I freaking better because if I scroll and look at it, I will continue to laugh. Possibility because from what I've seen from him, uh, it's been it's been very good. I, I don't think that's the most likely scenario, but I think that it's not closed off in terms of his potential. You son of a bitch. What? I answered the question. What's wrong? <laughs> What's the issue? I, I, I muted myself. I managed not to crack. But immediately after I finished that question, I... <laughs> I, I don't understand. You asked me about a Fadi, I answered... So that's eighty one thirty nine. Okay. <laughs> Just same shit as always. <laughs> so we have a few questions in the regular part of the mailbag. Some uh, some non best and worst player related. Um, Judd Zolgad's hoodie. Right, Dustin asks. And since we it, this actually works out great, since we actually have like a three man pod this week, we can argue amongst ourselves about this uh if all of you were left on an island which guy is eaten first and why uh 
I tweeted out that I'm pretty confident I could use uh, Reef's bones to to pick my teeth, but only I, if you caught him. I, yeah, I am. Was at first, I am probably one of the more difficult of the three of us to catch. Second, I am like the least useful to catch. I'm so tiny. I bet if a reef and I teamed up on Dusty, it would work. Like I'm fairly confident I could figure something out for a reef but it wouldn't be worth it but i have a feeling dusty might have might have a little bit more meat on him so a reef and i combined could take dusty well the elephant in the room james is that you have much more meat of course i do but i have deceptive speed and i'm the only one of the three (laughs) of us deceptive what i'm the only one of the three of us that has dad strength dad strength that's absolutely true. I, I agree with James on both counts. Uh, I thought about this all day today. The, definitely the most worrisome situation for me is if the two of you gang up on me. Because, uh, I am confident that a reef cannot take me in a fight and uh, that I can outrun James. But the two of you together, especially uh, given dad strength, which is a real thing. Dad strength uh, is a thing. Uh, I mean, you're, you're the one tossing around a, a two-year-old. You know, every day I got a kettlebell that I just that that, that tackles me every day. Exactly, it like wiggles and it's like weirdly proportioned and stuff. Like I just go to the gym a couple times a week and like all my all my weights are stationary and don't cry. Uh, <laughs> I I got that I got that uh, three hours of sleep, nothing left to lose. Shake to me, like exactly. You don't you don't want to fuck with that. Uh, I don't know though. I think. If uh, if I think nobody of the three w- of us, I'm also I'm also the best at forming alliances. Probably, I suspect that uh, my butchery technique is better than either of yours. Like uh, when it came to oh, yeah, but like, that's like, like dressing, that's a skill we're gonna value. Yeah, we're we're not gonna, we're not interested in how it's being cooked afterwards. Like we <laughs> we don't need a we don't need a sirloin cut of anything <laughs> here. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that I would do the most efficient job, like you know, cleaning the the bones or whatever. Look, look, I need uh, uh, secondary it's, like bonuses it's... in order to convince one of you to uh, like, gang up with me and Dusty's not the other. Gonna, Dusty's going to talk to a reef. Games are only useful in a situation where the person that you're cleaning would would necessarily be similar to a, another person that would be cleaned, like you. So you, only if the island had someone. Who had your basic build, where your butchery skills be a useful tiebreaker? Because no matter what happens, no matter how inefficient James and I are, right, we're still going to get more meat out of you than you at your peak are going to get out of me. Out of you, yes, that is accurate. So that efficiency uh, doesn't matter. Dusty's big selling point is going to be something along the lines of, yeah, but you know, after we kill him, and after we, you know, after we kill James and and take off his knees and everything, I can make a nice marrow stew afterwards too. <laughs> exactly. I am uh, very enthusiastic about using every part of my producer. <laughs> leave leave nothing wasted. That makes me the kingmaker. I have to choose between the two of you in terms of my alliances. Well, and with, and I think that's the the unfortunate reality is that this is going to require an alliance between between two people because we individually have such uh, I guess divergent uh, natural strengths. I guess except for me, I'm slower than James and stronger than Arif. <laughs> <laughs> but I am neither the the fastest nor the strongest. <laughs> it's gonna end very poorly for one of us. Uh-oh. Well, I think for for all of us. I mean, like, so we eat a reef, and then like three hours later, we're hungry again. Oh my god! Did you and really just go that's there? Such a dumb joke. Because you're skinny and small. <laughs> yeah, okay. It has nothing to do with your Asian uh, descent. Absolutely, exactly. <laughs> nothing at all to do with it. Nothing at all to do with that. It isn't terrible what, human being. I mean, at the at, and realistically, like no matter who is eaten first, uh, the other two will be found like with like knives in the other person's body, like either with our with your hands around you know, each other's necks or you know stabbing the other person to death until you both die. Like no one, if we start eating each other, no one gets out alive. Right, no one wins. But the question was who <laughs> was first? Who's first? Mm. Dusty, yeah, probably, Dusty and I are going to be found, and the uh, the guys going to be like, oh, "What happened?" It's like we couldn't handle the metrics anymore. 
couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't <laughs> handle the whole saber metrics anymore. It, it, it got too much. If if there's other food on the island, like if there's like things that I can eat in trees, then I like my chances a lot better because I uh, I suspect I'm a stronger climber than either one of you. Oh please, but, uh, climbing coconut trees is <laughs> my blood. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, that's so racist. I can't make the joke, but you can. Uh, yeah, that's how that's it works. Here. <laughs> you can't use that term. Really Only a reef works. can. <laughs> All right. Also, All I've right. literally climbed coconut trees. How? Like that's obviously I have an advantage. Obviously, obviously. 